arrived in Scarfell. Beautiful place this. Last night at about 10 o'clock in the dark. Pretty lonely in here. I anchored. There are National Park boys in here, but it was blowing pretty hard and uh, I felt uh, I didn't want to go looking for a boy. I knew where I was. I anchored in eight meters of water, put out 30 meters of chain, put my anchor alarm on, which is my Garmin 72, kindly denoted, kindly denoted by my shore crew, and went to bed. Got up six o'clock this morning, it's now 7.30. I know it's a bit late, but I'm uh, setting off now for uh, hopefully Percy Island. Yeah, nobody's here at the campsite today. Well, I've pulled the anchor up and I'm gonna head out and put the sails on. I'm not gonna show you putting the sails on because most of you have already seen that. And uh, we'll get on the move. Gonna pull a bit of main up. Carpel. We anchored in about there and uh, we're going to go round here down this side and basically over that way where the thing pointing is where we're going to go. Coming into the rocky headland. Yeah, it's amazing how far these boats come out nowadays. It's all been the advent of four stroke engines, just makes them so much more efficient. Just here, it's coming up a bit, 12 metres of water just here. And there's where we are in relation to the headland. fairly safe to be assumed that the, uh, the profile of the rock going into the water there is the uh, underwater profile just uh, around the end here. So looking at that, you know, I could probably go round about, uh, say, 30 metres off and I won't hit the bottom. I'll give it about 60 or 70, I think, just to be on the safe side. Here we go, there's 11 point water here. Looking back at the point, you can see a little light color as you can see the rock going down. Ten meters of water now. Gone down to twelve. Haven't gone over the shelf yet. Seven here. Six. Thirteen. go we're over it and once you get to the rough stuff she drops over the other edge 19 now well 
Well, that's goodbye to Scarfell for a, another year or so. Beautiful rock formations along here. Just shows you how huge the island is. Protein line out again, streaming. Just hope that I uh, can catch a mackerel. Few and far between at the moment. I think it's the wrong time of the year now. Not sure. I think it will go further south. The more chance I'll have. Coming to the end of the island now. The wind's picking up. And I'm going to turn the engine off. Just here we're in 43 meters of water. Goose wing doing about three knots. That's Derwin Island. And this is Three Rocks. And I see that's a nice island to go on and have a bit of a walk. And I see a man on there walking his dog. I can't, can't see a boat anywhere. Must be round the other side. And Scarfell is now 10 miles behind and still 54 miles to go. And we're only doing three knots, so you can do the math. Derwent Island a beam at 12 o'clock. Seems to have a very nice beach in there. The old protein line doesn't seem to be catching anything. And I've got the computer out. I'm editing a movie. And over to the side there is my mobile phone with Navionics on on it so I can keep on an eye on me position. Well the wind's filled in but tracking along with the with the, with the tide at uh, seven point four over the ground. I think great. Uh, that gives me Percy's in about six hours time. I'm still running with a full main and a jib and uh, I just hope it just stays as it is. If it gets close anymore, it'll get rougher and it'll slow me down, especially when the tide turns. Percy's over there in front, 40 miles away. That's Prudhoe Island. It's... Uh, Basically off Mackay, but a bloody long way. And uh, when I was coming from the uh, Percy's a few years back, in the morning I just uh, looked at, you know, went out, 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 saw the island there, and I thought, oh, that's it. That's Scarfell. Didn't think any more about it. We started sailing, you know, and like eight eight nine hours later I go oh, I don't know if I'm in the right place and uh, I couldn't understand it and then I looked at the uh, thing and I zoomed in where my cross was and it said Prudo Island you know Prudo's there and behind us is Scarfell So there's a lot of difference. It's drawing really well. And we're cracking on. That's not what the water looks like when you 
going bald by you at about seven knots. There you go. I have to lay it, I'm having to lay off quite a lot of uh, sail at the top at the moment, so I'm going to put a reef in. The autopilot's struggling a bit in the gusts. It's, it's quite, quite a wavy track, so I don't fancy sailing it for 10 hours, 8 hours myself, so I'm going to put a reef in. I've got something on the protein line. and uh, it's bleeding, bleeding out down there before I bring it on board. I don't know what it is. More than right, it's a tuna. Uh, bloody fat mackerel, I don't know what. Well, it's all happening. Still got the fish. Not too much blood in here. It's hanging over the side on a rope. I've uh, fixed the autopilot off at that angle there. I pulled the jib in. And now I'm going to put another reef in the main. Well, I'm quite tired. Well, I pulled the fish in. I think oh, then I reefed, I think. And then uh, Got the fish under control. And then I had to put another reef in because it was blowing too hard. Anyway, and the bloody reefing line came undone. So anyway, after half an hour, I'm back to where I am with two reefs in, and one fish dangling over the bank. I think it was a tuna, I don't think it was worth it. I've decided that uh, I'm going to motor an hour now and just let these seas calm down because there's not a great deal of wind and if I uh, just turn the motor off and try and sail, me sails are going to flog terribly. So I'll just give it an hour. We're doing about 7.5 knots now like it was before, it's blown a good 20 knots. I'm having to steer it now. Can't leave the helm. Need to pull the jib in at the minute. I'll just see if this uh, stays or goes. What it looks behind anyway. Well, it's calmed down again. It's now about 5.30. I've got Percy's on the bow. And it's time to cut up me fish so I can get a bit of it in me fridge. Well, the sunset tonight was a bit of a fizzer. And up in front, 12 nautical miles away, in the centre of the screen, is Percy Island. We're heading for West Bay, doing about five, five knots. Dropped anchor last night at Percy Island about nine o'clock. 
It was uh, fairly rolly then and there were about seven boats in here, I think. Anyway, there's only one left this morning when I woke up. I think it's blowing from the north, uh, east. It wasn't yesterday, it was more from the east. Uh, anyway, it's very rolly. I managed to get a bit of sleep and I don't believe I, you know, you don't think you did, but I must have done. I was very tired. Last, yesterday, you know, we let set off, not much wind, carried on, not much wind, not much wind. And then I uh, caught a fish. Just as I caught a fish, the wind came up. So I pulled the fish in, had to put a reef in, and I couldn't do anything with the fish, but just leave it there dangling at the back of the boat. It was just, you know, had to steer the boat. And in the end, uh, it, it blew even harder, so I had to put another reef in and kind of tidy up the boat a bit before I could do the fish. Anyway, I uh, cut some uh, slabs off the fish and it happens to be a tuna, so uh, it's not so good. But anyway, I've got some protein to keep me going. Yeah, I had a shower last night before I went to bed, you know, so in my bucket. That was at about oh, 10 o'clock, I suppose. And uh, I was completely shagged. So as soon as I got that done and tidied the boat up and made sure I put my uh, Garmin 72 on to, uh, as my anchor watch, it's not just for dragging, you need it for uh, if your boat swings, you need to know where the wind's coming from. So when you're in bed, you know, you, you need to know, uh, you know, what's happening. So it, it tells you that if it goes off, you know you've moved 20 meters. So you can get up, have a look, press the button again and go back to bed. You know you haven't uh, uh, drifted because you're obviously on a curve on your anchor chain, but uh, it's very good for that. I was thinking of going ashore here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be here all day, so I'm gonna go around the other side of the the island now, where I can go ashore from there, because it's uh, not really uh, uh, too good here, you know, for uh, for living on board the boat when it's so rough. 